esteemed members, on behalf of Bangu Bantam SROC of ICI, let me extend a warm welcome to each one of you for this tax planning. Topic Service Tax Implication on Construction Sector. Here we have with us an eminent speaker who is none other than, other than C. A. Ramakrishna Sangu. I request C. A. Bharat Raj to escort the speaker to dais and welcome with bouquet. to introduce our speaker. C. A. Ramakrishna Sangu is a partner in Mes Mrs. Manohar Chaudhary and Associates. He is a member of an Indirect Tax Committee of ICI. His, post his post qualification experience predominantly relating to the areas of indirect taxation, namely Central Excise, Customs, Service Tax, VAT and CST. He has been a faculty for indirect tax laws for CA, CWA and CS students. He is a renowned faculty for the member of ICI, ICMAI for indirect tax laws. He has presented papers on various topics on indirect tax laws including budgets and, in, and its impacts on various forums like ICI, ICMAI, FICCI, AP Chamber of Commerce, All India Tax Federation, Federation Association, etc. On behalf of Bangalore branch of SIRC of ICI, let me sincerely thank C. A. Ramakrishna Sangu for having agreed to be the speaker for tax claiming. May I request C. A. Varad Raj to present a memento as a token of our appreciation and respect to C. A. Ramakrishna Sangu. We also thank all the participants for showing keen interest to attend this session. Once again, thank you and over to you, sir. Dear members, so today's topic is service tax implications on construction sector. Works contract service, that is what is works contract service? What are the various exemptions available? under the Finance Act 1994 with respect to the construction services. What is the place of provision of service with respect to construction services? The place of provision of service is very important because as per the definition of the service under the negative list design, a service would be taxable in India if and only if the service is performed within the taxable territory. So what is taxable territory which has been defined to include extend to the India etc etc. So, it, it should be necessary that the place of provision of service should fall within the taxable territory if the same is liable to be taxed in India. So, what is the place of provision of service with respect to construction services which is dealt by rule 5 of the place of provision of services rules. Then what is the eligibility of sender credit with respect to construction services? What is the treatment of free issue of materials? In case where the contractee is supplying materials at free of cost are at a reduced price and the service provider is making the payment of service tax under composition scheme. And a special focus in today's session with respect to construction of residential complex services in the context of recent Delhi High Court judgment and what are its implications on the industry. And tripartite agreements where there is a landowner, where there is a builder, prospective buyers, what is the valuation and tax implication with respect to the sale of flats to the outside buyers and with respect to the landowners. And there is one more concept called BOOT projects and what is the service tax implication. That is build, own, operate and transfer. What are the service tax implications? And there is one more concept called redevelopment model or reconstruction model. That means an apartment or an association is already having a, a building consisting of let us say 50 flats. Now they want to demolish that building and reconstruct the flats. Further they will appoint a builder, they will engage a builder. Now he will reconstruct the flats. In addition to that he will construct some more flats that he will sell to others. That is the consideration for this arrangement. Now what is the tax implication? And finally development of layouts, private layouts, greater communities or where the uh, builders or developers they buy a particular uh, number of acres of land they will divide it into plots 
and they will lay up the roads. Now what is the tax implication, especially construction of roads within the layouts. In the layouts, if you see, there will be roads construction. Whether that would be called as a, a road which is being used by general public and thereby eligible for exemption under notification number 25 or 12, serial number 14A. Roads, bridges, tunnels, etc. used for general public. Whether it will be eligible there and thereby you can claim exemption or not, that also we will have, we will study in this today's presentation. What is a service? We know all know. It's in any activity carried on by one person to another person for consideration and includes declared service. I included this slide to make you once again to make a note of that last word includes a declared service. Because the construction services, whether it's a works contract service or a construction of complex or any other civil structure, building or park area, are specifically dealt in the declared services. I am skipping that particular definition of service. Now, what the section 66E says, declared service. There are two clauses which talks about construction related activities. Clause number B, construction service. Construction of a complex, building, civil structure or a part thereof, including a complex or a building which is intended for sale to a buyer only or partly but it is not taxable, it will not be a declared service when except where the entire consideration is received after issuance of the completion certificate by the competent authority. Same, whatever you have read, we have read in 65105ZZZH, construction of residential complex service, the same definition they have lifted and put it here as a construction service. Now they are making it very clear that these construction services are liable to service tax. This is specifically declared as a service and is subject to service tax. Provided if the consideration, entire consideration, that means even a single rupee you should not receive before granting the occupancy certificate by the competent authority, it may be municipal authority and chartered engineer. You should not receive any, any amount of consideration before the granting of the completion certificate. Once it is proved that or once you receive any amount prior to the grant of the completion certificate, you will be attracted by this provision. On the other hand, if the entire consideration has been received by the letter only after the granting of the completion certificate, then it, be it becomes a sale of immovable property, then neither VAT will come nor service tax will come. That is with respect to construction of a complex service. Now, works contract service, this definition mostly Except the first part, remaining second link you will find in almost all the backlogs. It covers almost all everything. All the contracts wherever there is a transfer of title in goods from the service provider to the service receiver. So means a contract. It can be any contract. Earlier there are only five contracts, five clauses in the earlier design, before negative design, like residential construction of residential complex service commercial industrial construction services, commission installation services, EPC contracts, turnkey contracts. But now look at the definition, it is very wide so as to accommodate any contract where there is two elements are involved. One, condition number one, there is a transfer of property in goods from the service provider to the service receiver. There should be transfer of title to the goods and which is subjected to where? And number two, it is for, for the purpose of carrying out construction, erection, commissioning, installation, completion, fitting out, repair, maintenance, renovation, alteration, everything, even a small alteration or any repair work, including a paint work to a building, let us say. If a paint work, if you give a contract to a labor or a labor contractor in such a way that Paint is also to be supplied by you, painting also to be done by you, both are done by you. So that means there is a transfer of title to the goods that is paint from the contractor to the service receiver which is subjected to VAT and there is a service of repair or maintenance. Everything maintenance is covered, repair is covered, renovation is covered, alteration is covered. Whether these things are done to a movable property or immovable property, both are covered. Don't think that works contract means always services 
business in relation to movable property? No. Even if you do a service, a contract which involves material plus labor, even with respect to goods, classic example would be servicing of or repairs of motor vehicle. You have a car, you will take it to a garage. Now, there may be two kinds of situations. One thing is change the engine oil and wash my car. Here, in this contract, there is a transfer of property in goods that is diesel, which is subject to VAT, and there is a service called washing of the car. It's a works contract. It's a works contract. On the other hand, you may say, you may give the car, you may, you may only say, just wash my car and give it to me. It's only a service. There is no transfer of title to the goods. So that, that is not a works contract. So in each situation, we have to identify whether or not there is a transfer of title to the goods during the execution of the contract, plus there is a service element. If these two are involved, whether it is in relation to movable property, whether it is in relation to immovable property, the same will come within the ambit of the works contract definition. There are some FAQs on works contract services. Whether annual maintenance contracts, the answer is very simple for any question. Answer is answer lies in two points. One is whether there is a transfer of title to the goods, whether there is material component is there, yes. Whether there is a labor component is there, yes. If these two questions are answered affirmatively, positively, then the contract will result into a works contract service. So annual maintenance contract. The answer is if materials are also supplied in the during the course of the execution of the maintenance contract, of course it becomes a works contract, otherwise not. Now, whether pure labor contracts for building the structure, for building of our construction works, I engage labor, they, of course no doubt they will be doing the service of construction of my building. Whether it is a works contract, the answer is obviously not. They are not selling any goods to me. They are providing only a service. It's a pure labor service. Sometimes you may engage a contractor to supply the labor, manpower. In that case, it becomes supply of manpower services. So it will not become construction services. Next, whether repairs and maintenance services of motor vehicles? Yes, if materials are involved. Next, whether completion and finishing services with reference to new construction shall be construed as original works? This is a bit debatable. It includes finishing services. Completion services like building has been constructed, it has come to an end. Now you are uh, giving works to the painting of the new buildings, new structures, building, small small repairs, and all finishing works. Whether that will be construed as original works. See, this concept of original works comes into picture at the time of valuation. The valuation rule 2A of service tax valuation rules divides the works contracts into two categories that I will come a bit later in the next slide. And then it is, it is treated as uh, original works. And then is composition scheme always beneficial? What is composition scheme? Now it is, cannot be called as a composition scheme. Now it could be called as an abatement scheme. Rule 2A. It says original works, other works. Generally, as per Rule 2A, or rent with valuation provisions of the Finance Act 1994, whenever there is a composite contract, you have option number one. What is that option number one? You identify what is my material portion, you identify what is my labor portion or service portion and you pay service tax on the service portion, VAT on the material portion. But what if I am unable to identify my material portion or service portion separately? Then rule 2A of service tax valuation rules comes into picture which says that whether you are Works contract is a original works. It is a new construction, original works means, whether fully or partly. If it is a new construction, it will fall under original works. In any other case, it will fall under repairs and maintenance services. Now the rule says, if it is a original works, I will assume that the taxable value shall be 40% of the gross amount charged. That means they are assuming 60% is towards materials, 40% is towards labor. So now you can take the 40% of the total gross amount charge as the taxable value and pay service tax on the 40% value. In, in any other case, that is repairs, maintenance, etc. other words, your taxable value will be 70%. Earlier to this amendment, there used to be repairs and maintenance works with respect to goods 
Repairs and maintenance work with respect to immobile property. If it is in relation to goods, the taxable value used to be 70 percent. If it is in relation to immobile property, the taxable value used to be 60 percent. But I think in budget 2014, they clubbed both these things and they said anything other than original works, the taxable value shall be 70 percent. So now, whether it is always beneficial to go for and opt for 40 percent scheme, that depends upon facts of the case. If it is like commissioning and installation services, supply and installation service, where the material value is huge compared to labor value, that is if you feel only 20% would be the labor cost, installation cost, then it is not suggestible to go for an abatement scheme. You can identify what is your material portion, balance will be the labor portion, you pay service tax only 20% value, you will end up paying lesser service tax. So it is not that I always go for the abatement scheme 40% because it is simple to calculate. You should always have a cost benefit analysis whether if I go and pay service tax on the composition scheme, what is my what is the outflow of the service tax? If I don't opt for composition scheme, what is my outflow of the service tax? Whether it is beneficial. That depends. Next. Can I adopt different valuation methods for different contracts? I have contract A, B, C, D. Can I say for contract A I go for composition scheme or abatement scheme? And contract B, I will go for specific value method. Can I go? Yes. There is no restriction in the valuation rules that for all the contracts you have to adopt the same method. No. You can adopt different valuation methods for different contracts. For contract A, you may say I will go abatement scheme. For contract B, I will go specific value method. You can go. One more point. If you are an individual or a firm, you are providing worse contract service to a company. Reverse charge mechanism shall apply. 50 percent you have to pay, 50 percent the other guy will pay. Now the question is whether where the service provider has adopted non-abatement scheme, regular scheme. Now can the service receiver adopt abatement scheme? Am I clear? Service provider, service provider individual has adopted specific value method and identified his 50 percent portion, he is charged in the service tax invoice, service invoice. Now the question is, the other party, company, which is liable to pay service tax or reverse charge mechanism, can adopt a different valuation method than one which is adopted by the service provider? Again the answer is yes. If he is opting for specific value method, now I can go ahead and adopt a composition scheme. There is nothing in the valuation rules which, can, which prevents you from adopting a different value method than the one which is adopted by the other party. Both services can take input tax services. Yeah, yeah, that depends again service tax rules, server trade rules. If you are a contractor, your job is contract, contractor, subcontractor, no doubt, you can take it. But if you are other than a contractor, server credit rule to KL. Input definition, input service definition both says that you send input does not include any inputs which are used in construction of a civil structure or a building or part thereof. Similarly, any input services used in relation to construction of building or civil structure or part thereof, it is not an input service for other than contractors, builders. So others cannot take once you use any inputs or input services for construction of a civil structures. If it is for plant and machinery, yes, you can take it. It is an input. It is an input service. But if it is for civil structure, no. You can't take as per the center trade rules. Anyway, I am discussing that. Next, I am following composition scheme under my VAT, if at all. If at all. Can I adopt non-composition scheme in service tax? Or vice versa. I am adopting composition scheme in service tax. Can I adopt non-composition scheme in VAT? Of course. Both are independent class. Both are different statutes. No statute has controlled or not controlled the other statute or they, can, they cannot control the other act. So, both are independent class. If you adopted composition scheme in the service tax law, you can go ahead and adopt non-composition scheme in the VAT and vice versa. This is important point. Now, valuation just now I was discussing. As far as the works contract, as far as the works contracts are concerned, you have two methods. Method number one, specific value method. 
That is, what is my gross amount charged? Out of which, what is the total value of the goods involved? Excluding VAT component, because it's a tax. You reduce that, you arrive at the service tax bill. Service, value of the service or which service tax is paid. This is called specific value method. You are able to identify by maintaining separate detailed books of accounts. You are able to identify what is my material portion, what is my labor portion. Well and good, wonderful. You go ahead and pay service tax on the service portion that you have identified. The other case would be, no, I can't, I, I cannot determine what is my service portion in this total contract. Now you come here, rule 2A, capital A of the service tax determination of value rules, which says that if your work is a original works, original works has been defined, basically new construction, it need not be new construction, demolition and construction is also a original work, other than repairs and maintenance works. So if it is a works contract, I am saying, giving you an option that you pay service tax on the 40% of the total gross amount charged. If you have charged 100 rupees, you calculate into 40%, that is 40 rupees, this is your taxable value. On this 40 rupees, you come and pay 15%, including cesses, service tax. This is what about abatement scheme with respect to works contracts involving original works. If it is other works, the accessible value shall be deemed to be 70% of the total amount charged. Now the next question comes. What do you mean by the gross amount charged? The gross amount charged, whether it includes the value of the materials supplied by the contractee at free of cost. For example, a steel plant gives me a contract to construct a building within their premises. Now they will say, whatever steel required for the purpose of this construction, I will supply free of cost. You construct and give me. Total contract price otherwise is 100, but for the steel supply, it is 60. Now what is my gross value, gross amount of the value charge? Whether it is 60 or plus 40 of the steel which is supplied by the contract. The valuation rule says the gross amount charge includes all the value of all the goods incorporated in the contract. Incorporated in the or executed in the works contract. So, whether the goods are supplied by contractee, either at free of cost or at concessional rate, in either case, you have to include the value thereof in the gross amount charge for the purpose of calculation of service tax. And accordingly, you have to calculate 40%. It's not 60 into 40% in our example. It is 100 into 40%. Of course, there is a Delhi High Court judgment where I have mentioned in a separate slide where the sestate opined that since there is no transfer of property in goods from the contractor to the contractee, the same cannot be included in the accessible value. That is the sestate judgment. But subject to that, the, as per the valuation rules, the gross amount includes the value of the uh, material supplied by the contractee, either at free of cost or at reduced price. Coming to seminar credit with respect to works contract services, what the explanation to of rule 2A says is that further removal of the doubts. See generally this provision, this kind of provisions you will see in seminar credit rules. But service tax valuation rules is talking about seminar credit. This is one such situation where the service tax valuation rules is talking about eligibility or entitlement of seminar credit. Now what explanation 2 says is that, see rule 2A talks about abatement scheme for works contracts. Explanation 2 of Rule 2A, that means this is applicable where the SSC is paying service tax under works contract services under the abatement scheme. Now what the rule says, the provider of taxable service shall not take seminar credit of duties or assess paid on any inputs. Here they are stressing only on inputs. What does it mean? This explanation does not cover either input services or capital goods. So it says inputs used in or in relation to the said works contract, you can't take seminar credit. So wherever inputs are, you bought inputs as a contractor, you paid excise duty. Now that inputs were executed in the contract, works contract, construction project, that excise duty you can't take 
standard credit. Other than that, you can go ahead and take input services which are used for providing that output service. For example, you subcontracted the work. The subcontracted the subcontractor will charge you service tax. Yes, you can utilize that service tax or any for that matter any service, engineering services, architecture services, any interior decorative services, any services that you have used for providing your output works contract services or capital goods which are used for providing the works contract services, then you can go ahead and avail the standard credit. So therefore, if the service tax is paid in abated value, 40%, 70%, as the case may be, says he cannot be taken on inputs for the set contract. Now the question is, this is in the context of, this is in the context of composition scheme. Now the question is, can I take input access to the credit when you are providing a works contract service under non-composition scheme? Can you? Can I take standard credit of input access duty paid on inputs which are used for providing my output service or works contract service but I am paying under specific value method? Can I? The answer is again no. There is a circular also in this regard. There is a big debate before a negative is present in, the, in this particular thing. The logic is that, see inputs you have executed. The output when you are saying I am paying on a specific value method on what portion you are paying service tax? On what portion you are paying service tax? Service portion. What is declared service? Service portion of the works contract. So, if the 100 is the value, 60 rupees is my value towards the services, so you are paying service tax on 60. That means on the input 40 rupees or material component 40 rupees, are you paying output? duty on that, any excess duty or any central duty? No, you are not paying any output duty with respect to the material component. So when there is no output duty, what is that, when, when, why, when, why central credit is to be given? To avoid the cascading effect. When the cascading effect will come into picture? When there is both input duty as well as output duty. When there is no output duty, is there a cascading effect? No. So when there is no cascading effect, are you eligible to claim central credit? No, that is the reason. That is the reason why, whether you are following abatement scheme or non abatement scheme, you are not entitled to avail the standard credit of inputs which are used in the execution of the box contract. Okay? If the SLC is other than a contractor, I already explained Rule 2K, let me Rule 2L, input definition, input service definition, any inputs, all input services, both. If you are a contractor, if you are a builder, if you are a developer, the restriction is only with respect to inputs. It ends there. But if you are other than a builder, normal person, you are a company, you want to be constructed your factory building, you are given the contract. Now you are incurring some input duties or you are availing some input services. The contract will charge you service tax for construction of the building. Now can you avail the survey ready? The answer is no. The rule 2K read with rule 2L says any inputs or input services which are used for providing a service in the nature of construction of a civil structure or a building or a part thereof is not an input, is not an input service. So consequently, it can, you cannot claim standard credit of either inputs or input services which are used in the construction of a building or civil structure or part of rule 2 k and with rule 2 l So this is the stand of the standard credit with respect to inputs and input services from builder point of view, a contractor point of view and other than builder or contractor point of view. Now this is broadly about works contract services. Any doubts on works contract services? So 70% or 40%? That includes the free material cost also. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mentioned there. It includes the free material cost. Yeah, but you read the explanation to the rule 2A where it includes the gross amount charged means includes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There it is clearly mentioned. All goods incorporated in the contract under the same contract or any other contract. That is the language used. Including, yeah, including the value of the free materials. Gross amount charge includes all those things. Now, 
with respect to construction services, what are the exemptions available? What are the exemptions under the negative risk design? A, survey, a person is liable to pay service tax once it amounts to service. What is a service? Service means an activity. Activity means any activity. Positive, negative, forbearance to an act, tolerance to an act, 66E again. Now, all, now Shoka's notices, most of the Shoka's notices are related to tolerance to an act. My, my service provider failed to keep his promise. I revoked the bank guarantee he submitted. Liquidated damages. I revoked, I encashed. Now the department says you pay service tax on the revocation of bank guarantee because you have tolerated his non-performance of the contract. Tolerance to an act is a declared service under 66 EB. In one of our case, one of the client's case, it's a club where the members book the rooms they, by paying some deposit money. First of all, it is an issue whether services provided by the club to its members, whether it is taxable or not, whether the concept of mutuality comes into, comes into picture or not in the in context of Haryana High Court and Gujarat High Court. Even assuming that that is applicable prior to 2012, what is the situation after 2012 where the service definition explanation includes a statement saying that the members of the club and the club are deemed to be separate and distinct persons. So, in that context, a member, assuming that it is liable to pay service tax, clubs are taxable, even GST, they are specifically included, business includes clubs, they specifically included in the definition itself. So, members have paid deposit money. As per the rules of the club, if the member subsequently cancels the booking, a part of the deposit will be forfeited by the club. Forfeited. Now, club got Shoka's notice stating that you please pay service tax on the amounts forfeited on cancellation of the bookings. The same thing is happening for car dealers also. Car, when you book, you, you have to pay some booking at once. When you cancel the order, they will forfeit some amount. They are also getting Shoka's notice to pay service tax. Sir, why? You are tolerating, it's a tolerance to an act. You are tolerating an activity. Act. So, activity is such a wider term. So, service means an activity carried on by one person to another person for consideration and the service is provided within the taxable territory. So, it's a wide enough definition to cover most of the activities that are taking place nowadays. So, the immediate course will be whether my service having identified that it is falling within the ambit of the service definition, whether I am able to pay service tax. See, merely because it is a service, it is not, you cannot come to a conclusion that I am able to pay service tax. The next step is whether it is there in the negative list, 66 capital D. If it is there in the negative list, there is no levy at all. Because charging section says, there shall be levy tax, service tax and all services other than those listed in the negative list. So there is no levy at all. Okay, it is not there in the negative list. Don't come to a conclusion it's a taxable. Now there is one more notification, mega exemption notification, section 25 or 2012. Whether it is there in the notification. If it is there, if it is there, you are exempt. That's what we are trying to find out. What are the services which are construction related services? What are the construction related services which are prescribed under section not notification number 25 or 2012 and thereby you can claim exemption. There are three entries in the mega exemption notification which deals about specifically about construction related services which are exempt. Serial number 12, construction services provided to government, local authority, government authority. Serial number 13, construction of roads, bridges, two, three, four points are there. And then Serial number 14, construction service related service related to railways, housing projects, agriculture, etc. These three are important, especially in the context of budget 2015 and budget 2016 because they have eliminated so many existing exempted services. What are that? Let us check. Now, these are pre-budget 2015 entries. Entry number 12, services by any person, by any person to the government, to the local authority, to the governmental authority by way of construction, 
We have to check what are all the things which are covered. Here, everything is covered. Construction, erection, commissioning, installation, fitting out, repair, maintenance, renovation, alteration. Everything is covered. In some process, renovation, maintenance, repair, fitting out, repair, alteration will not be there. Only construction, erection, commissioning, installation will be there. So, we have to check what is the nature of the work you are doing. Is it construction? Is it erection? Is it a repair? Is it a maintenance? Etc. So here everything is covered and if it falls in any of the following specific constructions then they are exempt from service tax. Point number one, civil structure or other original works. This is important. He is talking only about original works. Predominantly used other than for commercial industry, business and professional purposes and non-commercial buildings is exempt. But what happened to this exemption, I will I'll come a bit later, it is yellow colored, I will discuss in a, in a bit time. Second one, historical monuments, even today it is exempt, historical monuments, if you are constructing. Again, a structure for educational, clinical or, or cultural establishment. See, remember, these constructions you should do to the government, local authority, government authority. If you are doing this for any other person, it is not covered here. Then you have to check whether it is covered elsewhere. But the, here I am talking only about the construction, for example, construction of a historical monument to government. Construction of a structure for educational, a, a college, a university to the government, or a hospital, a government hospital, or a cultural establishment. Now what happened to this entry in the budget 2015 that I will discuss. And then canal. Irrigation works, pipeline, conduit for water supply, even today it is exempt. And then residential complex. Residential complex for self-use or by their employees, by income tax department. They want to construct a residential building so that they can give it to their employees for as a residential accommodation. Now contract is given to you, exempt. But what happened in budget 2015? So I, there are three points which are yellow colored. Civil structures, etc., other than commercial purpose, educational institutions, art or cultural establishments, or hospitals, and residential complex for self use. Now, what happened to these three items? What happened is in budget 2015, they were withdrawn. From 1 3 2015, they were taxable. Immediately effect, with the immediate effect, they were withdrawn. Now, the question is, what happens to my existing contracts? It is a government project. I already quoted a tender where I have not mentioned service tax component. Now if you go and say service tax is payable, they will say sir there is a lot of procedure, it is not there in the tender, I cannot reimburse you the service tax component. Then what should I do? Should I have to pay out of pocket? Yes, you have to pay service tax. If you are able to get money from the government, wonderful. If not, you are supposed to pay the tax. Then, having withdrawn these exemptions from 1315, in budget 2016, they restored. In budget 2016, they restored, putting a condition that I will exempt this retrospectively, that is from 1315. I will exempt this with retrospective effect provided by 1315. That means before 1315 you should have got the work order. You have entered the contract before 1315. That means if you enter into the contract for these constructions on or after 1315, this budget 2016 amendment is not applicable. Budget 2015 continues. That means you are liable to pay service tax. But this amendment is applicable if and only if the work order has been given to you, you have entered into the contract with the government for construction of these projects before 1 3 2015. It's not end there. Now they say, in any case, this restoration of exemption is not applicable on or after 31st March 2020. What does it mean? Condition number one is you should have entered into the contract before 1315 and you should have completed the work by 31st March 
2020 if not whatever RA bills you are raising after 31st March 2020 whatever amounts you are receiving after 31st March 2020 ready with point of taxation rules 2011 you are supposed to pay the service tax so this is the fact that is why they are yellow color any doubts in this withdrawal of exemption 1315 restoration of exemption 1316 provided the contract is entered before 1315 and the contract is completed by 31st March 2020 or else from 142020 you are liable to pay the service tax. Of course, they may extend there, but of course now GST if everything goes well. The next level of exemption, next entry, construction of roads, bridges, etc. It is by any person to any person. Earlier slide we have seen by any person to a government, to a local authority or to a government authority. Here by any person to any other person, roads, bridges, tunnels, terminals. But condition is they should be used by general public. A private road, what is private road I will discuss a bit later in the context of each and these are coaching high court judgment. What is private road, what is public road? So if, it's, if you prove it is a private road, no problem. You are not eligible for exemption. It should be for general public. A building owned by a 12 AA entity for religious use, not for any other use. Religious use like temple, masjid, church. For religious use or Prime Minister Avas Yojana under that scheme. Pollution control or a free and treatment system and a structure for the God's sake, rest in peace of the souls. They said structures meant for funeral, burial or cremation of deceased. See, if this entry is not there, what happens? So even for construction of funeral and burials, you have to pay the <coughs> service tax. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Okay, maybe in GST it is taxable. Now, construction of next, next type of exemption, third one. Airport, yellow colored, ports, yellow colored, railways, normal, motorway, metro. So earlier, that is before 2015 budget, that is before 1315, any construction services provided within the airport, within the ports are exempt. Now in this budget, what they are doing? It is an elimination process. Now in, in the last budget, they eliminated ports and airports. In this budget, they eliminated monorail and metro rail. Despite the fact that now construction of metro rail is the prestigious and ambitious projects of any state government or central government. But despite that, even though it is being utilized for public, they said no, metros pay service tax. Like you, if the state government gives a contract to the LNT for construct of a metro project or motor rail project, now service tax is paid. Even though it is a government, state government, the LNT will collect, collect the service tax from the state government and pay to central government. Okay. So next, a single residential unit, if you are constructing, that is exempt. It should not be as a part of a residential complex, an individual house, meant for a single family. Meant for a single family, how you interpret, it's, it's a different story, litigation, debate it. If I have two kitchens, whether it can be called as a single residential unit, it's debatable. Can it have G plus 3 rooms? No. No, no. Single residential unit meant for residents of a single family. Right. Right. The moment you say group, gone. Single residential unit. And then post harvest storage infrastructure, etc. See, mono rail or metro rail would be exempt if the contract is under prior to 1-3-2016, that means existing contracts. You have already entered into the contract for construction of the metro rail and mono rail. So if you have already entered into the contract by or before 1-3-16, no service tax will come into picture. So this withdrawal of exemption is applicable only for those contracts which are entered on or after 1-3-2016. That is with respect to mono rail and metro rail. Now what about this airport and port? Same story what I have discussed for government projects. 
In budget 2015, they re removed this exemption. Construction within the airport airports taxable. People started paying service tax. They are not able to pay service tax. Despite the fact that they have already entered into the contract, their tender document doesn't contain the provision for reimbursement of service tax. Now, in the budget 2016, they restored. Same condition, saying that this exemption will be applicable provided the contract is entered before 1-3-2015 and the contract is completed by 31st March 2020. Sir, what happens to my service tax paid in between? It shall be liable to be refunded to the SSC by the department. Same procedure, subject to level B, etc. etc. Unjust enrichment, all those concepts will come the moment you say form R. And these are new entries, low cost houses up to 60 meters, mechanized food grain, handling system, etc. They are exempt. And then all these things I explained. So, those are the exemptions with respect to the construction sector. Constructions to governments, construction of roads, tunnels, etc. Construction of railways, metro, monorail, food grain systems, etc. etc. Those are all the exemptions. Those are only the exemptions which are available under the present. Finance Act 1994. Now let us see the implication of the subcontractors. I have seen many cases as a consultant that the subcontractor comes and says, Sir, my main contractor has paid the service tax, sir. So that's why I have not paid the service tax. Is it right? So they are trying to take shelter saying that my main contractor, his contract value is 100, he subcontracted me 50 rupees, but he paid the service tax on 100 rupees. Government should receive service tax only on 100, he discharged, he subcontracted me 50. I have not discharged the service tax, now I got the sugar notice. Shall I be liable to pay? There are high court judgments saying that yes, because taxable event is different from person to person. He is, there is a privity of contract between the contract, main contractor and the contractor. And it is a separate contract between the subcontractor and the main contractor. You are providing service to the main contractor, main contract is providing service to the contracting. So both are liable to pay service tax. Sir, does not it amount to double taxation, cascading effect? No. The moment you levy service tax on the main contractor, he will take seller credit and he will pay the Balance. Of course, there are favorable judgments also, one or two, saying that when the government has received the full money, whatever is to be received and offered, you know, anyway receive, leave it. So, there are contradictory judgments. Now, if you go to tribunal, you may get either a favorable order or unfavorable order, but mostly you may get an unfavorable order. The next question is, when my Main contract is exempt. Let us say you are providing a service of construction of a road, a public road, works contract service. Is it not exempt? Is it not exempt? Yes, it is exempt. Now the question is now I have subcontracted some work in relation to the construction of the road. Let it be an engineering service. Let it be an architect service, let it be a manpower supply service, or let it be a back to back subcontract, road construction. Now, can you say, since I am providing these services, the other service provider, the subcontractor, the engineer, the architect, can you say, anyway, this service is being used in relation to the construction of a public road which is exempt, therefore, my service is also exempt? In this context, there was a circular. In there was a circular, I remember 2011 circular. And you also read section 66F1, interpretative rules. It's a very beautifully drafted rule. You say that, you see the last point, unless otherwise specified, reference to a service, where, wherever act refers to a service, the exemption notification refers, works contract service in relation to roads. That's called reference to a service. 
So works contracts service in relation to roads. Reference to a service called main service. In my example, works contract in relation to construction of road. Reference to a service called main service. This service shall not include reference to a service which is used for providing the main service. Such a beautifully drafted law. He is clearly saying when you when I refer a service. That is a works contract service in relation to road. I refer what? Works contract service in relation to road. I refer that it does not mean, it does not include any other service which is used for providing this service. Therefore, what is exempt? What I am referring? Works contract service in relation to road. What service you are providing? You are providing engineering service. What I refer? Am I clear? What I referred? What I referred in entry number 30 of the mega exemption notification? I referred works contract service in relation to roads. What you are providing? How can I give you exemption? I have given exemption for what? Works contract service. If you are also providing works contract service, then it is exempt. In other words, if I am a main contractor, I got a contract for 100 crores from the government of Karnataka to lay a road, which is exempt. Now I subcontracted a part of work to my fellow person. For construction of the road, what you are doing? What you are doing? Construction of the road. What the section says? What the notification says? Construction of the road. Is it exempt? Yes. As simple as that. As simple as that. So what I am referring, that only is exempt. You can't extend to such an extent saying that whatever the services which are provided in relation to exempt service is also exempt. No. I'll give you one more example. I constructed a toll gate. Now I have a toll gate. Now, mega exemption notification or negative list provides an exemption for any amount of company collected by way of toll charges. Is exempt. If you are collecting toll money, from the passengers, that is exempt. Now what I have done, I have assigned the job of collection of the toll charges to an agency, to an independent agency. Their job is what? To collect the money, give it to me. For that I charge, I will pay some commission. Whether that is exempt? What is exempt? Providing service by way of allowing passengers to access to the road. That transaction is different. Now what is this service? This service is, they are helping me in collecting the toll charges. That is different. So your service is not toll collection, toll access to road. You are not allowing me to access the road. I am allowing the passenger to access the road. My transaction is exempt. The transaction between me and the passenger is exempt. The transaction between me and the independent contractor whose job is to collect on my behalf is a business auxiliary service, as a business support service. That is taxable. That is the interpretation of that particular 66 year. For that reason, for that reason, for safe side, they have included a clause also, not required, but now they are saying in 29H, subcontractor providing services by way of works contract only. Works contract to another contractor who is also providing works contract, but that is exempt. Then you will also get the exemption. If you are providing any service other than the main service, like engineering services you are taking and you are using a construction of public road, he is taxed. For me it is an input service, he, will he has to charge me service tax. I can't say, no, no, it is being used for construction of the road. That is not the criteria. What is exempt is the criteria. What is exempt? Works contract service. What is doing? Engineering service. Chal, it's not a so this is with respect to taxability of subcontractors. Now the entire service tax will come into picture if and only if the place of provision of service falls within the taxable territory. Charging section. Charging section says if and only if the service is provided within the taxable territory. Then how to identify whether a service is provided within the taxable territory or not? In place of supply of rules. 2012. 
Now in that rule 5 says, rule 5 deals with services in relation to immobile property, what is the place of provision of service? So the place of provision of service with respect to construction services or immobile property is the place where the immobile property is situated. Therefore, if you are providing a construction service or any other related services here, you can go and read rule 5, I mentioned that. Engineering services, drawing, architecture, interior decoration, etc. All construction related services in relation to the immobile property which is situated outside India, outside the taxable territory, or let us say Jammu and Kashmir. It is not taxable in India because the place of provision of service is outside the taxable territory. So you should also look into this parameter whether this service is being provided within the taxable territory or outside the taxable territory. I already explained what is the treatment of goods or materials supplied by customer to the service provider. However, in Bayama Builders Private Limited, it was held that value of free supply of materials shall not be included as mentioned above. It is subject to litigation. Now, I come to the important topic of the day construction of residential complex in the context of Delhi High Court Judgment. Excuse me. Any doubts so far? Now, let us spend some time on construction of residential complex service. By this time you might have received some queries from your builder saying that sir, my customer is asking refund of service tax which he has paid to me when he purchases the flat along with 6% interest. They are saying that they have received some WhatsApp message. Or they got some news article in their newspaper saying that all customers please go and collect your service tax from builder with the interest. Sir, am I liable to refund it? Will the department give it back to me? But first of all, what the Delhi High Court says? First of all, residential complex is just now discussed with declared service, specifically declared, provided. Any amount is received before granting of the completion certificate. Then there is an abatement notification. Abatement notification provides for 75% abatement, which is reduced to 70% in the recent budget. There are sender credit provisions. They are saying that sender credit is not available. It is mentioned in the abatement notification itself in the table in the last column. Saying that if any inputs are used for construction of this thing and you are utilizing the abatement, you are not entitled to take the sender credit of inputs. Input service you can take. Capital goods you can take. Now, these are the legal provisions. In this context, this is the legal stand. Now, what the judicial pronouncement says? What is the issue? What is the petition before the court? Suresh Kumar Bansal and Union, Mrs. Union of India. The court in this case said that when there is a sale of flat, which the value of the price includes the value of the undivided share of the land, whether it is constitutional, whether it is valid, whether it is taxable. Now what is the petitioner's argument? The petitioner argument is that, sir, I agree, parliament has the power to levy the service tax as long as it is not on transfer of title in the immobile property because that is a state matter stamp duty will come. So any services in relation to immobile property, of course, we have seen many, many cases even in relation to renting of immobile property services starting from 2006 to 2011, so many cases whether services of in relation to renting of immobile property, whether they are taxable or not. Again, with respect to immobile property, here the court said the parliament has wonderful or effective powers to levy service tax. I don't mind, we don't mind that. But my issue is that when you say something is taxable, you should also say what is the value on which the SSC is liable to pay the service tax. What is the value? You said in the finance act, 66E, that construction of a complex is taxable. Wonderful, very good. Then where is the provision to identify what is the value on which I am liable to pay the service tax? Let us see valuation rules. Rule 2A 
is the only case where they are talking about construction service. What they are discussing there? They are discussing their works contract services, that is a contract where the price includes the value of the goods. If there is a value of the goods is involved in the contract price, how to value it? It is mentioned clearly, beautifully, just now we discussed. It says, this is matter number one, specific value method. Identify material portion, reduce it from the total contract price, arrive at the service value, pay the service tax. You are not able to identify the same rule says, if it is a original work, take it 40%, other than original works, take 70%, pay the service tax. There is a clear cut machinery of identifying the value of the service. Then, counter is, by the department is, sir, there is a notification. Abatement notification is there, 26 part 2012, which provides for 75 percent abatement, 70 percent abatement. The court said, a notification cannot be a substitute to the act or the rules made under the act. No, I don't agree. I don't treat the notification as a law. It should be provided either in the act or the violation rules. Like what is mentioned for works contract services, their works contract services involving value of the goods they have declared. What is the value? How they arrive at the value? But where is the similar provision where the contract includes the value of the land? No, it's not there. So when there is no valuation mechanism, the court said the levy would fail. It is not only your duty to levy the tax, but you should also tell on what value you are liable to, the SSC is liable to pay the service tax. Since there is no determination of value on which the SSC is subject to pay service tax, the levy would fail. Service tax is not payable. Refund to the service tax collected, subject to unjust enrichment to the builders, and in that particular case, to the SSC, along with the interest. This is what a judgment. This is what a judgment. So, so apparently, the Delhi High Court said, you are not liable to pay service tax on flats sold by you where the transaction involves sale of undivided share of the land. No. Of course, whether the other states, now their SSCs within the Delhi, they can utilize very much this high court judgment, they can stop payment of service tax. What happens to the other regions? On the other day, I was talking on in Andhra Pradesh Chamber of Commerce Forum where the Commissioner of Customs was present. I was discussing this. The topic is the present issues in the indirect tax laws. Then, Commissioner categorically said, No, we can't accept that judgment. It is not our jurisdiction of High Court. No. So, this is issue number one. What you have to tell your client? The client's client. First, this is issue number one. Issue number two. The other high courts may give a diverse opinion. The department will go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court may reverse the judgment. Or the Finance Act 2017 may amend the act with retrospective effect. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Like for commercial training and coaching center services, when the courts have declared that no, no commercial training coaching center service tax is applicable only when the service provider is a commercial entity. If it is other 25 companies providing commercial training and coaching, not taxable. That is judgment. Sustained by law. Then what they did immediately? They amended the definition of commercial training and coaching center with retrospective effect. So, this may happen. So, these are the reasons that you should tell the client's clients was it may not work out. Please wait. For the time, what I can do? You can pay under protest. Why? To avoid the limitation on section 11b to file the referred claim later if Supreme Court also gives the favorable judgment. So, this is the step. Now, I have discussed all these things. Now, what are the key takeaways of the judgment? Very important slide. This ratio is not available for the applicable for the landowner portion. We all know service tax is payable even in case of 
flats handed over to the landowner. I will discuss that topic. There is a separate topic on that. This judgment is not applicable to that. Why? Because the whole issue is where the sale price involves the value of the undivided share of the land. In case of landowner share, there is no transfer of title to the land, to the owner. So, not applicable. Similarly, in certain types of contracts, it will be like, you know, first you enter into the builder for sale of undivided share of land, that is one agreement, then you will enter into supplementary agreement for construction. Again, this judgment is not applicable because the value in the second contract does not include value of the land. So, this judgment is not applicable. This ratio is applicable for both prior and after. It is there in the judgment. The same provisions are lifted even under negative list design. So, this is applicable even under the negative list design. Clearly mentioned. So, SSC may avoid payment of tax based on the judgment, but subject to risk of reversal of this judgment by the Supreme Court and other possible risks. So this is what Delhi High Court judgment. Any doubts on this? Sir, when the High Court pronounces judgment where the Union of India is made the party, uh, still uh, the Commissioner of Customs is not able That's what they said. Jurisdiction and That's what they said. It's a public forum. That's what the Commissioner said. Sir, when there are no other uh, so, other any judgment is there that they have to follow as a judicial. See, in fact, there are recent past, in the recent past only, there are number of high courts for slashing of the department. They are saying when there is a higher court judgment, you follow. I don't accept, you are making uses. Cases are piling up in my courts. Why you are not following the my judgment? That's what this case. Recent judgments are there. But this is not the stand of the department. You can still fight and say, no, no, Delhi High Court judgment is applicable. Okay. They say, no, you file a repetition in your respective High Court. You may get it. That's what we can do. Okay. There are contrary judgment, then they can follow the favorable judgment, but otherwise only single judgment, normally judgment. But this is what the practical will say that means. Next, tripartite model of development. That means where there is a landowner having some acres of land, there is a builder or developer and there is a third party, I am, outside buyer. Now the agreement between the landowner and the builder is that you give me your land, you hand out the development rights, I will construct 50 flats, 25 flats to you in consideration of handing over of the land, development rights, for granting the development rights. I will be 25 flats. And there are money, some money. And the balance running, I will read and I will send it to outside people, outside buyers. This is a tripartite agreement. In this context, now the question comes, as already mentioned, Delhi High Court judgment is not applicable for land ownership. I know I explained the reason also. Now having said that, the issue comes where in case of valuation. How to value this? particular flats. What is the value on which I am supposed to pay the service tax? Because there is no monetary payment which is flowing from the landowner to the builder. Then on what value I should pay the service tax? It is obvious that the consideration for me is the land in lieu of which I am handing over 25 flats. But what are the legal provisions in this regard? With respect to valuation, what is the value on which the builder is supposed to pay the service tax? For this, there are two documents available. There is a 2012 circular, very popular circular, which explains very many matters relating to construction related services. 2012 circular. And the other is education guide, service tax education guide, which is issued in the context of the negative history. Board has come out with this document before introduction of the, just before the introduction of the negative decision. Now what this document say? Let us see. Now what a CBC circular 151 bar 2 bar 12 says is that the value of these flats would be equal to the value of similar flats charged by the builders or developers from the 
second category of service receiver namely the outside values. For example, I am handing over 25 flats out of which 15 flats are 3 bedroom, 10 flats are 2 bedroom. Now, what is the value that you are selling a 3 bedroom flat to an outside buyer? If you are selling to for a 3 bedroom flat, so let us say 1 crore, then on the 15 flats of 3 bedroom that you are handing over to the land owner, you pay service tax on 1 crore. Similar flats. You don't take any other value there, that's what department is doing. They are taking whichever is higher and tabling that land. So, so similar to that. Value in the same category differs because of business consideration. Maybe liquidity crunch and uh, one crore, one buyer 90 lakh, another buyer one Yeah, yeah, I'm coming with that. I'm discussing. That's circular even gives answer to your question also. That question circular itself is there. Then it says the similar <coughs> value of similar flats. Similar flats, what is the value you are selling to the outside value? But as is your uh, senior person is rightly mentioned, the value will not be the same throughout the project. If you come and book today, when I started hitting the coconut and uh, inaugurated my project, I may say 2000 per square foot. You are my first buyer. As the building progresses, the cost will go off. It may end up 5000 rupees. Now, what value should I take now? Then the circular says the value near. At all around the time at which the flats are handed over to the landlord. What is the point of time at which you are handed over to the landowner? At that point of time, what is the nearest value? That value you take, you pay the service tax. That is what the circular says. That circular, please note, is not rescinded till date. Even we entered into the negative history check. Keeping that circular as it is, now education guide says, no, no, the value shall be the value of the land which is given by the land owner to the builder at the time of giving the development rights. It appears to be more logical, right? Because what is my consideration to the builder? The value of the land. That is my consideration. It's like an exchange. You give land and you need a period. That is what the education guide said. It said the value shall be the value of the land at the time of handing over the land to the builder for doubting the project. Now which value should I take? That circular, department circular, which says take the similar value of the flats, department own guide, service tax, education guide, which says Take the value of the land. There is a contradiction. Now which value should I adopt? There is clear cut contradiction. Now many advise the clients that since service tax education guide is issued in the context of the negative list design, you follow you follow education guide because that is a common logic. Anybody can take it. Because the circular was issued in the context of prior to the negative risk design, education guide is in the context of negative risk design. Now, in this background, the high level committee recommended the department, and the department has come out with a clarification to clarify the clarification. See, 2012 is what is a clarification. Now, in 2015, they have come out with a clarification to clarify the clarification. Clarification for clarification. Circular for circular. What is circular says? If circular says, nobody expected this. This circular says, was the circular which was issued in 2012 is in accordance with the valuation rules, which is issued by the CBEC. Whereas the education guide is issued is only for education purpose. It is neither a circular nor a notification. Therefore, it is not having any legal backing. So don't follow education guide. What about the people who follow education guide? After three years of implementing the negative list regime, now they are clarifying a clarification. Moreover, they are saying 
the education guide which is issued by the CBEC, they are saying they doesn't have, it doesn't have any legal backing. Note this point. So now they clarified that clarification only you have to follow. Now what happens if you would have adopted land value and now differential service tax is liable to be paid 18%, 24%, 30%. Service tax paid 100, interest paid 120. Now their bonus is suppression of facts with intention to evade payment of service tax. Invocation of extended period of limitation section 73 proviso. Please come and pay 100% penalty. This is how when you issue a clarification to clarify the clarification. It's a wonderful clarification. So now what is the conclusion is, what is the valuation of land owner share is, it is the value at which the similar flags were sold to the outside buyers at all around the same time at which the flags are handed over to the land owner. Next important point. Now what happens if the land owner who has been allotted with some flats, if he is reselling the flats before granting of the completion certificate? Am I clear about my question? I am a builder, I have not yet received the completion certificate, I have written handover agreement to the, with the land owner, I hand it over. But still construction is going on, but now you don't want 25 flats, what you will do with 25 flats? Now you want to sell some 15 flats. Now you sold, completion certificate not received, whether are you liable to pay service tax? Answer is yes. So whatever the flats which are being sold by the landowner before issue of the grant of the completion certificate by the competent authority, even the landowner is said to be providing a service and is liable to pay the service tax. Subject to whatever service tax that he has paid to the builder that he can take servant credit and pay the service tax. But service tax is payable. This is important point. Now there is another concept called boot projects. You might be aware of BOOT. Build, own, operate and transfer. Government will come and say Inviting tenders for construction of a road from so and so place to so and so place. You can own it. You have to operate it for 20 years. After 20 years, you have to hand it over to the national or the government. This is the contract. So I place a tender. The government sell out a land. Now let us say I lay a road from so and so place to so and so place. After 20 years, I have to give it back to the Government. Now, what is the taxable? What are the tax implications? Here, there will be three parameters. One is the transaction between the government and the concessionaire, that is, the person who come forward to construct the road, where the government assigns a particular land for development, is one transaction. Transaction number two, either I may on my own, with my own labor, I will construct the road. Or I will appoint an independent contractor to construct the contract to construct the road. Different transaction. Transaction number two, contract number two. Number three, once constructed, I will give a rental basis on some other basis to the end user where he will be using the road, paying the toll charges. Third contract. Government and concessionaire. Concessionaire, contractor, concessionaire, end user. So, we have to look at each transaction independently, they are independent of each other. If the allotment of land by the government to the concessionaire, if it amounts to service, rent with service definition, rent with negative relation, rent with maximum exemption notification, if it amounts to service, because even now, now, even the services provided by the government are it's not only support services, any services provided by the government are taxable other than passport, visa, driving license, statutory registrations. They have issued for 78 pages circular also as to what is taxable. 
that is point number one. If that is taxable, government will pay service tax, or if it is reverse charge, reverse charge, the other party will pay the service tax. If you engage an independent contractor and ask him to construct the project, if he constructs, obviously it amounts to works contract service. Or you may also have other services like engineers, architects, etc., etc., etc. So they will pay service tax on you. So you pay service tax. You just check yourself whether this is eligible as an input service so that I can take the server credit. Now the third transaction is between concessionaire and the end user. Collection of toll charges, allowing access to the road to the public on toll charges. Whether it is taxable? No. Negative is taxed? No, it is not taxable. So that is not taxable. That's all. That's all about good products. So the crux is that in this type of contracts, you have to identify each contract and treat them as a separate contracts. You can't club all the three and say it's a composite transaction. No. Government to concessionaire different contract, concessionaire to contract different, concessionaire to end user different. You have to see in each case whether service tax is applicable or not. Wherever applicable you pay, wherever eligible you take the standard credit. Any doubts in good projects? Then another interesting thing, reconstruction model. Have you heard sir? Redevelopment or reconstruction? This is a case where I am an apartment and a society where we have 50 flats. It's constructed some 50 years back. Now it's time to demolish and construct the new flats. Situation is very bad. So now you would call upon a contractor and say, was you demolish these 50 flats, you construct. I will not pay any money. You add 10 more flats, you take the approvals, you add 10 more flats, that 10 flats you sold, send it to outside buyers, that is your consideration for constructing me the flats. This is called reconstruction model, whether it is taxable. Here there are two categories of service receivers. One is the existing flat owners, original owners, and the second one is new buyers. That is taxable no doubt at all. Construction of residential complex service. There is no hesitation. Now the question is whether the service provided to the existing original ones whether that is taxable. In the old design it is not taxable. Because the explanation says it does not include Construction of services for self-use, personal use, by the service receiver, whether if you remember or not. So if it is for personal use of the service receiver, it is not taxable in the pre-negative list design. So in that context, that circular says it is not taxable, 2012 circular, again, same circular, 151 bar 2 bar 12. That circular says, no, no, redevelopment contracts are not taxable as far as the transaction between the contractor and the original buyers are concerned. But what about now, negative list design? In the negative list design, they have not carried that explanation, saying that construction for self-use by the service receiver is exempt. What is exempt in the negative list design? Construction of a single residential unit otherwise than as part of a residential complex is what is exempt. So, what is the conclusion? Now, even that is taxable but under box contract service. Because there is no land in Am I right? There is no land in So, as far as this part is concerned, he will be liable to pay service tax under box contract service. The other part is concerned where it will be taxable under construction of residential contract service. Again, there is a conflict between Obviously, the circular and this one. Unfortunately, the, what they would have done, they would have rescinded that circular, 2012 circular, because there are so many contradictions between the provisions in the current context and the circular which is valid even now. Okay, if you read that circular and you apply that circular, later you come and see this provision, you may end up in a wrong classification and non payment of service tax. Discriminatory in nature, no? because I built a house for myself. I get complex for me. Same house property. Why should I be discriminated? You mean to say why should I pay service tax? Uh -huh. Lies like that sir. Now the GST law what it says? 
the following are the transactions which are deemed to be made without consideration. Schedule 1. No, no, see, at the, at the end of the day, logic doesn't work. No, it's not logic. Yeah, you, that, that is always our choice. You can work for that. I'm a part of a complex. I should not be discriminated. Yeah, you That is redevelopment model. Now I come to the last part of this today's session is regarding entry number 14 in the mega exception notification. Namely, construction of a road for use by general public. Construction of road by use by general public. Easy example. Now let us take a case. I bought a 10 acres of land. I will develop that land. I will lay roads in the plots. I will make it as a plot and sell the plots. For laying these roads, I will engage a contractor, he will construct the roads. Now the question is, whether construction of this road is a public road, is a private road, am I liable to pay service tax or not? Sir, why this question is coming? Why it is not a private road? Because in many state laws, I would say in almost all the state laws, there will be an act called Gram Panchayat Act. When you are developing a layout and when you are laying the roads, the roads have to be gifted to the concerned as Gram Panchayat. That is why this question comes. When I gifted my land road in favor of the Gram Panchayat, which is nothing but a government, is it not a public road? On the other hand, the developer say, boss, this is my layout. I construct the walls, I construct a big gate, I keep a watchman there, I will say, you allow only these people. Outsiders not allowed. Boat will also be there. Now, his logic is also correct. Outsiders are not allowed inside. But why this provision has come, might come, or may have come, why this is incorporated is, if tomorrow, if there is another party, another person behind your place, which that person has no access to the main road, because in between your body is there, the government should have a right to allow him a way by breaking your wall. At that time, you can't come and say, no, no, this is my road, get lost. No. Maybe that is the reason why they said you gifted it the lands. In this context, we were fighting a case in Vaisa, Andhra Pradesh. While doing the research, I got this judgment, Cochin High Court judgment, where it says, you see the last paragraph. The court said, the pathway would be private in character if it is connects only to a single house. Once it is meant to connect somebody else's, thus becoming part of a network of roads, a network of paths, however short it may be, however insignificant it may be, however rich and all, it is to subserve the public purpose of providing access to and fro the court set. According to the court, given a judgment saying that this is a public road. Of course, this judgment is in the context of Gram Panchayat issue. But I can utilize this for service tax. Of course, the court, whether it is for service tax law or other law, ultimately the concept is the road is a public road. Now, what the service tax act law says? If it is a public road, it's So, here is a case where you can use and say, this is a public road, I have gifted to the Gram Panchayat and in some cases like Kerala Act, Kerala Gram Panchayat Act Section 2, where it specifically defined what is a public road. But many acts doesn't contain that section, that kind of section, but if it is there, it's wonderful. We can use this section and say it is not taxable. So that's what I try to cover uh, as much as possible all the aspects relating to the construction sector. Any doubts on this? Any questions? Yeah. 
my question is on circular 151. 151, okay. Yeah. In the joint development, where it says about valuation on the similar flags. Mm -hmm. So it also says on the time of payment, that is on the conveyance deed, that is on the... With respect to land or land 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 land. Land. Yeah. It also says on the time of the conveyance deed or similar instruments, allotment letter or possession. Exactly, letter. exactly. So in that case, whether the sale deed has to be registered, then we have to make it. It's not the sale deed, it's the convenience deed. It's handing over letter, to put it in simple form. So in that case, the developer might say, I will construct the entire building and then give the handover. Yeah, people will not accept. <laughs> so obviously, obviously, the landowner will not be waiting, this is a common sense, yeah. until the construction is completed, there I will, you hand over the land after. There are people like that. Yeah. Clients come and say that this thing. When I explain this, they say, sir, I will keep the handing over letter as a post completion certificate. But it will not work, but you may try. You can give it a chance. So, but anyways, post completion certificate, if he has to. Next. This 151 circular and the other things which you guide. I, even I have read all those things. Yeah. I was just uh, planning to get away from the service tax. <laughs> when there is a uh, uh, transfer of uh, constructed space to the landowner. Okay. So I just uh, uh, went on reading the declared surveys and uh, determination of value rules 2006 and all those. So what uh, I might be wrong if this correct me. Yeah, yeah. So what I went through was to make a works contract service liable under service tax, it has to be taxed under the Karnataka or whichever state VAT laws. Yeah, obviously. That is it. Yeah. So when a builder hands over the constructor space to the landlord, it is merely a part of Yeah. Part. So I remember during 2006 and 7 and all, when we used to appear for a lot of assessment, it includes matters and all. Department used to ask on a most to value or similar flat which has been sold on that what they used to ask. That time uh, we used to always uh, contest saying that the definition of sale under K VAT is very clear as yeah, far as the consider yeah, consideration has to be yeah. yeah, monetary consideration or some other consideration, okay. a similar kind of thing. Mm. So that time uh, there was a latest case which we read that time was Thampur mm. Sugar Meals. Supreme Court case. Yeah, right? Dhamp yeah, Dhamp 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 it was uh, exchange of uh, license with the molasses. Okay. So, so, so can we still go by that uh, judgment or similar other judgment later development? The, the, point, is that, that, yeah, yeah. the point is that you may take that same definition, it also says for cash, for defer payment or any other mode of payment. Yeah, that is so what that is what they will say. First point. Second point, this taxation of sale of flats is in most of the VATs it is included in the charging section itself. If you read AD VAT section 4, subsection 7, clause D, it clearly says charging section. It's a charging section. It clearly says sale of any person who is engaged in construction and selling of flats is liable to pay tax at the rate of 1.25%. The charging section says. So, in the, in the this circumstances, it's very difficult to find a linear case like this. But it's of course, yeah. at any point of time, as you said, CA does not barter, where, where in GST, maybe that is the reason why they specifically include barter in the supply definition. Okay, so that is subject to litigation. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank